people are coming up and asking, you know, the table of YouTubers, like, what did you think about stuff? It was just uh, a common reaction. They're like, yeah, it's good. Whatever you thought, however good you thought it was, it's better than that. Hey, it's Chris. I'm back from WWDC and I have a lot of thoughts on a lot of things. I want to start by talking about Vision Pro. Obviously, what a crazy thing to experience in person. We do have one more thing. I had a whole video shot where I had some initial reactions and I actually scrapped that and I'm redoing it because it's weird. After talking with everyone that experienced the headset there in person, you get into these conversations and I start to ask people questions. Well, what do you think about this? Would you use it in this situation? And my opinion started to really get reshaped over the last 24 hours to the point where I feel like I need to just do a whole different video here. Obviously, there's a reason why everybody's excited. I mean, it's not every year that Apple comes out with a brand new product category. This thing has so much potential. I don't know if people realize it's not going to replace your Mac, your iPhone, your iPad, your Apple TV anytime soon, not in the next couple years, but this could be something that replaces all of that, maybe in a decade or in 15 years. This is a really big deal. Are people gonna look back and say this was kind of like an iPhone sort of moment. Potentially, spatial computing. I wanna do a whole separate video after I've had time to really think about this and analyze it on what that is, what it means. We're gonna dive into this a lot deeper, but what I wanna do here is clue you into some of the insights from the conversations that I had with other YouTubers and press people and just people who were at the event and also tried on the headset. But let's start by saying this. It's really not a, a matter of, is this going to be good? The headset, is going to be good in terms of the hardware and the software. Apple dialed everything in that they could dial in. So it's not, is it gonna be good? I think the question is, is it going to be useful? This is a new option that you can use for experiencing entertainment, for getting some work done. Is it an option that people are going to want to use to choose over the other options, the Mac, the iPhone, the iPad at the moment? That was sort of the question that I was posing to people. Would you wanna use this when you're getting some work done for productivity? Obviously, I'm super excited about the productivity aspect. It's cool that you can watch a movie and it feels like you're in a theater and on a 100 foot screen. Like, all of that is cool. It's cool that it can play games. The FaceTime thing, we'll talk about that. That's all really interesting. But I'm super interested in getting some work done on here. So I'm sitting there in Cafe Max and talking to I Justine and Judner from Your Average Consumer. And I'm just saying, you know, I'm interested in productivity. What are you most interested in? And Jenner's also super interested in the productivity. I said, would you want to, after experiencing it, use this, you know, to do your work? And he was like, oh yeah, without a doubt, I would rather do this. I said, would you rather do it than like your Mac? He was like, yeah. This completely redefines the concept of a desk setup. So just to be able to look down at your Mac and then have that screen sort of pulled out of your Mac and made virtual, but you can still use all your Mac apps, but you can enlarge that screen to make it huge. I can't wait to get some work done on here. That's what I'll say. I mean, I'm drooling over it, which I guess makes this a good time to say, if you haven't checked out my productivity course, how to get more done in the Apple ecosystem with less burnout, check it out down below and we'll explore the frontiers of productivity in the realm of spatial computing together. It's already become super entertaining to check out the fire hose of memes coming out about Meta's version of stuff and Apple's version of how this should all work. And it's just obvious Meta's version is so cartoony and just it's not a spot where people are going to want to spend time. And Apple's is so refined, the interface just gets out of the way, kind of disappears. And the comments that I heard as I was talking to people over and over again was like, it feels like it just gets out of the way. It melts away. And you feel like you're not even looking through something. It just feels like you don't have anything on your face. You know, as we're sitting there talking and people are coming up and asking, you know, the table of YouTubers, like, what did you think about stuff? It was just a common reaction. It was like, yeah, it's good. Whatever you thought, however good you thought it was, it's better than that. You know, everyone was like, you have to experience it yourself to really fully appreciate it. And, you know, that's true because how are you going to explain all the little nuances and stuff? But in hearing people describe it, and it's like, well, I got chills when I was checking out Avatar. Or it really felt like mind control. You're controlling it with your eyes and you're looking around, but it felt like you were controlling it with your mind. And because nobody can film their demos, you are just left with people describing like, well, here's what it was like. But aside from the eye tracking, which was the thing that floored everybody, I feel like, that pass-through mode, where when somebody enters the room, your apps kind of like melt away and or your content and you can see who's in the room and interact with them. That was pretty stunning to everybody. Another thing that just really had people 
wowed was the low latency. So if you've ever messed around with any of the Oculus products, you know, it's pretty passable for a lot of people, but a lot of people will still experience some kind of sickness in there if they wear it for too long, you know, 20 minutes even. And here everyone was like, there's so low latency that I almost can't believe it. And by the way, I don't want to make it just sound like everyone just loved everything about it. One thing that kept coming up, you know, in conversations with people was like, well, what about the weight? And as I was kind of getting other people's reactions to the weight, some people were like, I don't know that I'd want to wear it past that two hours at the battery pack lasts anyways. And I feel like it kind of depends. When I asked, you know, some of the girls over there, it was more like, yeah, I probably wouldn't want to wear it for, you know, too long for a super extended session. But the guys were like, well, I'm going to sleep in this thing. Now, in most of the demos, Apple was showing off the big head strap in the back, which is stretchy, looks comfy. And if you position that right, it's gonna help kind of redistribute the weight to make it more comfortable because it's still about a pound on your face. And over time, that can get more fatiguing. There's a reason they moved that battery pack off. If that was on there too, that'd be pretty crazy. And I think there's a reason why you're gonna wanna use your AirPods, your AirPods Pro instead of like the Max. But the weight isn't non-existent. I guess that's kind of the vibe that I was getting as we were kind of having the conversations about this. But what I want to point out is there's another strap that's an optional strap that can go over the top. And I like the way that Apple presented it because my initial thought was, oh, it's not going to mess up my hair. Like, that's pretty cool because already, like, I can't put on the AirPods Max before I come film, right? Because it's like smashes the hair down. Um, so I like the idea to be able to dip into and dip out of Apple's VR, AR world and, and playground. Um, do some work or whatever without getting all the hair messed up. But if you do want a more comfortable experience, there is that optional strap that can go on the top to help distribute the weight and make it more comfortable. I think people had some mixed emotions about the digital avatar. So when you get this set up, you kind of like hold it out and you can scan your face in and it doesn't give you like a photorealistic depiction of yourself, which is useful for FaceTime, right? But also the OLED screen on the outside, um, it'll show your eyes when somebody else is in the vicinity, so you kind of look like you're there and communicating, and that uses that digital avatar as well to show your eyes, not actually your eyes. A lot of people felt like that was un kind of uncanny valley weird, but a lot of other people were like, no, it's actually really cool, and especially when you compare it to what Facebook's doing, and they're really cartoony avatars, it's just like night and day different, and it's better. That one people seem pretty divided on. Was it too uncanny valley, or was it too weird, or was it, usable. There's a really famous uh, George Lucas quote where he talks about the audio for a movie is like f over 50% of the experience, something to that effect. And that really applies here as well. Apple dialed in the spatial audio on this so well, it reads the room and kind of makes things seem like they're coming from a particular direction. So if you're having a FaceTime call and you have like three people on the call, when the person over here speaks, it sounds like they're talking to you from that direction. And same with the person over here, for instance. And by the way, this is something we were talking about a lot too. If you're on the plane, for instance, and you have some audio going, people next to you can hear that a little bit, like faintly, because it's directional to your ear, but if someone's sitting right next to you, they're gonna hear your content. So that's why you're probably gonna wanna pair this with some AirPods, which brings up another thing that I feel like we were talking about quite a bit, and that was Apple has no controllers for this. So the meta solution is to have these clunky controllers, and what's good about that is you get some haptics. So there was this butterfly demo and everyone was talking about, yeah, the butterfly landed on the finger, which was cool. Like the tracking was cool, but nobody could feel the butterfly. And so that's one thing. If you go controllerless, which I think was the best move to do, you know, I'm not going to complain about it, but you do miss out on the haptics. So coming back to the productivity angle, which is again, what I'm super interested in. One thing that everyone was saying over and over again was how clear text looked, for instance. And obviously, Photos and videos looked much clearer than anyone expected as well. Certainly the feedback was much better than something like Oculus. But if you were gonna use this as a virtual workspace and you're gonna like type up a report or you gotta be messing with emails or messages, you want it to be as clear and as nice as possible. You don't wanna go from having a really nice sharp Apple screen to having something that was fuzzier. So the way that this works is actually really interesting. Where you look, in this environment is where uh, the computing power makes sure that it's really sharp and it sort of saves some power, you know, where you're not looking. It knows exactly where you're looking and that's where the magic kind of comes in. So just kind of a, a neat trick to optimize uh, how good things look. But as I'm sitting there having a lot of these conversations, the thing that really stuck out to me is it's not about this doing things better 
than something else that's already on the market, like the Oculus. The thing that this really offers is new experiences. It does offer better experiences. That's a component for sure, but it's the new experiences that I think are really going to be valuable to people, especially over the years as this develops. One comment that I think really stood out to me that kind of puts this into perspective is when somebody said, this feels like an extension of you. And that sort of puts this into perspective. Your iPhone doesn't feel like that. Your Mac doesn't feel like that. Your watch doesn't feel like that. This feels like part of you in a way. And as you add up all the comments from people experiencing this for the first time together, you start to realize there it's not creepy, but it's weird. You kind of have a little bit of this feeling of things are changing. It this is going to change and reshape the whole planet basically. And I'm not saying that in a like a fanboy, you know, hype type type of way because th this is a conversation that we were having too, you know, is this going to be successful or is it going to be a flop? And the price is a part of that. And, you know, we were talking about could Apple, should Apple even take anything away from this to create like a smaller version or a cheaper version? And the consensus was kind of like, I don't know what they would take away because it would be a compromise. You know, I think the way to improve this over time is to shrink the components, you know, and maybe this first version gets a price discount and remains sort of as bulky as it is and future versions maybe just slim down and enhance, you know, stuff rather than take away stuff. That seems to be the path forward in my mind. But as we were talking about, is this going to succeed or fail? I feel like the consensus was sort of Apple can brute force make this a thing in a way that Meta or even Google or some other companies just couldn't. You know, Apple can kind of will this market into existence uh, was sort of the consensus. Now, whether that is actually true or not, we'll see, but it feels like it. So it's just the beginning, but that's what's so cool. It's fun to have a new beginning, a new product to explore, to use, uh, to think about the possibilities about, right? I know you're excited too. All right, that's it for this video. I have so much to go through when it comes to WWDC stuff. I'm gonna dive into the iPad content. I'm gonna dive into the iOS stuff. And by the way, I got some other cool stuff coming I can't tell you about, but it's a good time to get subscribed, all right? I'll catch you in the next one. Later.